Very often we faced very easy shot, but we are not sure how Cubo will behave due to applied spin and speed. So in this case, I am going to show you how changes pop of the Cubo due to applied 3 different amounts of speed and 9 different spins. To visualize these differences, I will use this one single shot, which we face over and over again. To help you imagine what amount of speed I am using on the Cubo, I am hitting it straight towards short rail, and during low switch shots, Cubo after contact with this rail makes one length off table. During medium speed shots, Cubo travels two lengths off table, and similarly during high speed shots, you will use three lengths of table. And to better identify each specific shot and understand the behavior of the cue, I will use three different colors of path where white line is reserved for low speed shots, yellow line for medium speed shots, and red line for shots with high speed. I am absolutely sure that this video will be a great learning experience for you and help you to deal with completely different shots. So in this case, before we start, please make sure to leave a thumbs up for me and hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. Before we start our considerations about each shot, you need to understand very important things. You need to remember that very often object ball going not perfectly straight at the heart of the pocket what can significantly impact final path of the cue ball. During each shot, we need to consider factors like swerve, deflection, as well as cut and spin induced throw. For example, if we use low speed on the cue ball and hitting it at a point which is located on center vertical line, then we face cut induced throw factor, which means that cue ball pushes the object ball slightly to the outside. To reduce impact of cut induced throw, we need to use more speed or spin, or just aim only slightly thinner. But situation changes completely if we use side spin, because then during low speed shot, we face factors called swerve and spin induced throw. First factor means that the cue ball due to applied side spin deviates from its natural line and then curves and comes back on the natural line of the shot. But second factor means that due to applied side spin, Cubo pushes the object ball to the certain side. So in this case, if we apply left spin, then Cubo pushes the object ball to the right, and if we apply right spin, then Cubo pushes the object ball to the left. And once again, we need to slightly change our aiming point or to reduce both of these factors, we need to use more speed, but then we face last very important factor, which is called deflection. If we are hitting the cubo on its side points and use more speed, then it deviates from its natural line and hits object ball a bit more to the left or right. Deflection always pushes the cubo to the opposite side of given spin, so in this case, if you want to apply left spin, you should aim a bit more to the left, and if you want to apply right spin, then you should aim a bit more to the right. And you need to remember that as much speed and spin we use, then higher deflection will be. And all of these informations will be very helpful to understand what I needed to do during each shot. We need to start our considerations with low speed shot where I am hitting the cubo at its center. Cubo follows its natural path and this will be our reference to compare all low speed shots. In second low speed shot we need to apply top spin. And this time we can't see any visible difference in path if we compare this shot with center ball hit, but cue ball lands a bit further due to applied topspin. But if you want to hit the cue ball with backspin, then we are able to see big difference. This time, as you can see, cue ball due to applied spin lost a lot of speed before contact with object ball 
what result with shortest path which looks completely different if we compare it with center ball hit. But very interesting is situation if we try to apply center left spin. This time I can't see any visible difference if we compare this shot with center ball hit because QO follows almost same path and lands in a very similar place. But let's see what will happen if we applied center right spin. And this time difference is visible because right spin opens more angle for the cubo after contact with rail and additionally it gains more speed what result with much longer path. And situation changes once again if we hit the cubo with low right spin. Combination of low and right spin once again changes path of the cubo after contact with rail, what is visible comparing it with center ball hit. But if we compare this shot with this where I use center right spin, then we can see huge difference because cubo landed much earlier and bounced it off the rail with different angle. But situation is very interesting if we hit the cubo with low left spin. Because we used low spin, then once again cubo lost some speed, what result with very short path. But left spin created bit more angle after contact with rail, what is visible if we compare it with center ball hit. But difference is huge if we compare this shot with attempt where I apply a center right spin. To end our considerations about low speed shots, we need to see what will happen if we use top right spin. And once again, because we used touch of right spin, then cubo bounces from the rail with a bit more angle, but on the other hand, we can see that top spin gives additional speed, what result with longest path if we consider all low speed shots. But situation is very interesting again if we apply top left spin. Theoretically, cubo should have more speed due to applied top spin, but this time amount of left spin dramatically decreases length of path after contact with rail. This attempt is very similar to center ball hit and once again we can find huge difference if we compare it with previous shot where I used top right spin. In the second part of this video we need to discover shots with medium speed and let's see what will happen if we use center ball. And as I expected, due to applied speed, cubo travels longer path if we compare it with low speed shot with same spin. But on the other hand, we can observe that cubo bounces from the rail with different angle and follows tangent line of this shot. But we can find very interesting behavior of the cubo if we try to apply top spin. For the first time in this episode, we can see that initially cubo slightly curves after contact with first rail and comparing it to shot with same spin but low speed, we can observe different angle and much longer path. But if you want to apply backspin, then cubo's path changes dramatically. This time we can see that cubo immediately going towards top half of the table and difference is visible if we compare it to center ball hit, but on the other hand we can see much longer path and different angle comparing it to same shot with low speed. And now we need to discover what will happen if we use center right spin. We can see that due to applied right spin, cubo immediately changes its path after contact with rail, what is visible if we compare it with center ball hit. And actually this path is very similar to this when I used same spin but low speed, but there are a bit different contact points with short rail. 
but if we try to apply left spin, then we can experience another big difference in path. During this shot, we can clearly see that side spin changes path of the cubo after contact with rail, because it's going higher than during shot with center ball. But on the other hand, once again we can see huge difference if we compare two shots with different side spins, because cubo travels with completely different paths in both scenarios. The situation is very interesting if we apply low right spin. Due to applied backspin, Kubo wants to go towards top half of the table, but right spin pulls it back and significantly cuts the angle after contact with rail, what result that Kubo lands in a very similar place like during shot with center right spin, what is incredible and very interesting. But to see another huge difference, we need to hit the Kubo with low left spin. During this shot, we can see big impact of spin because cue ball immediately going towards top area of the table and difference between shot with center left spin is once again huge. To complete medium speed shots, we need to use top side spin. During shot with top right spin, once again Kubo initially slightly curves and this path is very similar to this what we could see during shot with low speed, but this time Kubo follows much longer path. And once again we can find big difference if we change side and hit the Kubo with top left spin. And as I expected, once again Kubo gains additional speed due to apply top spin, but left spin reduces this speed and changes angle after contact with rail, what is clearly visible if we compare two shots with different side spins. And finally, it is time for last part of this video, where we need to discover high speed shots. The situation is very clear when we hit the cubo with center ball. Path of the cubo looks almost the same if we compare it with same shot but with medium speed, but cubo landed much further. But if we try to compare all three shots with center ball, then we can clearly see that only during shot with low speed, path of the cubo is much different than during remaining two shots and this is caused by the fact that it following its natural path with natural rotation. And now we need to change spin and hit the cubo with top spin. Because we use high speed, then cubo bounces from the rail with a lot of power, but amount of top spin grab the cloth more what result with very visible curve at the beginning. If we compare all shots with top spin, then we can clearly see difference and as much speed we used, then bigger curve QO made. Situation is very simple if we change spin again and hit the cubo very low. And once again, due to high speed applied to the cubo, it initially curves, but if we compare all three shots with same spin, then the only visible difference we can find in distance traveled by the cubo. But let's see what will happen if we apply center right spin. During this shot, once again cubo gains additional speed due to applied side spin, which additionally dramatically changes path of the cubo after contact with first two rails. Differences between all three shots with same spin are not very visible, as the only thing we can spot is different point of contact with bottom short rail. But to see huge difference, we need to apply center left spin. Initially, QO curves and going parallel along short rail, but still has a lot of left spin, which pulls it back towards bottom half of the table after contact with left long rail. And if we try to compare all three shots, then once again we can see that only during low speed shot, 
path of the cubo looks much different because remaining two paths are almost the same and the only difference is distance covered by the cubo. Very interesting is situation when we try to apply low right spin. And for the first time during shot with right spin, Cubo immediately going towards top half of the table. And this is caused by the fact that low spin was dominant and side spin didn't have enough time to change Cubo's path. The biggest difference is visible if we compare all three shots with this spin because in each particular case, he will travel it using different path and land it in completely different areas of the table. And we can spot another huge difference if we hit the cue ball with low left spin. During this shot, cue ball going immediately towards top short wheel with a lot of power and this outcome looks completely different if we compare it with previous shot with low right spin. But this is not all, because we need to see what will happen if we apply top right spin. Once again, due to high amount of top spin and speed, he will initially curves and right spin is visible during contact with short rail, because then he will gain additional speed what result with very long path and QO landed close to top right corner. And this behavior of the QO is actually very similar to the remaining two shots with same spin, but we can clearly see the difference between puffs after contact with bottom short rail. But the most interesting outcome we can find during shot with top left spin. Initially, after contact with long rail, Kubo going practically parallel to short rail, but then curves significantly and going towards bottom short rail. However, during contact with this rail, left spin takes away a lot of power from the Kubo, what results that it lands in center area of the table. If we try to compare all of these three shots with same spin, then we can see huge difference because in each case, Cubo follows completely different path and lands in completely different areas of the table. As you could see, spin and speed are very important factors during position play in pool and very often we can achieve same result using completely different shots. For example, Cubo lands in very similar area when we hit it with medium speed and center ball, as well as during hit with same speed but using center right spin. But what is absolutely incredible, we can achieve similar result comparing these two shots. On the left side, I am hitting the Cubo with medium speed using top right spin but on the right side, I am hitting with high speed using low right spin. Two different amounts of speed and two completely different spins, but the result is very similar, what is very impressive. I hope you enjoyed my detailed comparison of each scenario, but above all, I hope you found it helpful and you will be able to leave a thumbs up for me. If you are not my subscriber yet, but you appreciate the quality of my content, then this is a perfect moment to hit the subscribe button to never miss any of my new video productions. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care.